Hello and welcome. Hi, my name's Dave. And in one of my recent tutorials, we connected a form to a database to perform CRUD operations. And that acronym means Create, Read, Update, and Delete. And even with a small application like that example, the logical flow of our code started to get a little confusing. Imagine what a larger application would be like if we didn't find a way to organize our code. So today we're discussing the model view controller design pattern. This design pattern is a concept and it has been applied in many different ways depending on the language, framework, and situation. We won't be writing any specific code in any specific language. I'm just discussing the overall MVC concept at a high level. Let's start with an analogy. When I order fast food, I'm putting in a request. And the request is entered into a controller system, and the controller sends my request for a number three combo to the back. The crew members in the back know what goes in a number three combo, so they grab all of the ingredients and then they send it to the front. The crew members in the front grab the individual parts of my combo and put them on the tray for the presentation. Oftentimes, the controller is connected to a display screen that says my order is now ready. My request for a number three combo has received a response. This delegation of duties, or you could say separation of concerns, is how the MVC pattern works. And when you're working on a team of developers, the delegation of duties could also be very similar. Now let's take a look at the model view controller pattern as it might apply to a simple to-do list application. The client is likely a browser on a computer or mobile phone. A request is issued through the client to the browser. The controller receives the request and the controller is likely the index page of the application. By default, the controller knows it should display the list of to-do items, so it reaches out to the model. The model is the part of the application that is dedicated to interacting with the database. In this example, we have a subdirectory named model. And this subdirectory contains the database file that creates the connection to the database. It also has the file with CRUD functions, and remember that means create, read, update, and delete. And this is for the items table. The model connects to the database and reads all of the to-do list items from the items table. Then it sends the data back to the controller. The controller doesn't display the data. That's the job of the view. The controller tells the view it has the data ready to be displayed. The files in the view subdirectory are usually just templates for displaying data. In our example, we have a template for displaying database errors and a template for displaying the to-do list. We also have a page with a form that allows the user to add items to the to-do list. After the controller tells the view it has the to-do list items ready to display, the view provides the item list template to the controller. The controller sends an HTTP response with the data in the proper view back to the user. So if we look back at our fast food analogy, we could say that we've received the number three combo in the proper to-go bag. Remember, there are many variations of the model view controller pattern depending on the technology stack and approach used. I hope this short discussion has helped you gain a high level view and understanding of the MVC pattern that you can continue to build on. I'll be releasing some tutorials utilizing the MVC pattern soon. Until then, the tutorials on your left may help you on your coding journey. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing, and I'll see you next time.